Hello, class. Um, this recorded lecture is going to be on section 2.2 in the textbook. And we're only going to do a couple subject matters. Uh, we're not going to do the whole section. And so we're going to talk about X intercepts and Y intercepts or intercepts on a graph. And this will be an important concept when we get uh, through chapters four and, and especially chapter five as well. And then I just want you to start thinking about graphing. Uh, graphing uh, technology has made it a little bit obsolete. But what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about graphing, say, a linear equation, and give you some techniques that I use when I have to do it by hand. And so uh, with regards to this, what I'd like to first start with is this idea of intercept and finding the intercepts on a graph. And what we mean by intercepts, and this concept here is super important, is that if the graph touches or crosses one of the axes, that's what we consider an intercept. So if it crosses or touches the x-axis, where you can see we have three of them on here, those are called x-intercepts. And when it crosses the y-axis or touches the y-axis, that would be called a y-intercept. And so that uh, concept, if that we take a look at this and say I draw this graph, and say I have these three points. And so say like these three points, this point would be x equals two, y equals zero. This point here would be say minus two for x and y equals zero. And say this point here would be x, x equals zero, y equals three. So remember that the first number is the x value and the second number. So oh, you can hopefully see a little bit of a pattern here is that if you are touching the x-axis, the y value is always zero. And if you're touching the y-axis, the x value is always zero. So the idea of doing these calculations will be if you're trying to calculate a y-intercept, you plug in the value x equals zero to do that. And when you're calculating a x-intercept, you set y equals zero and do the uh, solving of the equation. So for example, let me show the PowerPoint over here. So say like you have this crazy thing, and don't ask me exactly what the equation would look like. It's just an example of a graph. And so here we have three x-intercepts. The first one is at minus three, zero. The second one is at three, uh, three over two and zero. And the fourth or third one is 4.5. And zero. And we also have three y intercepts 0, 3, 0, minus 4 thirds, and 0, and minus 3.5. And so the idea of being able to um, see the intercepts when you look at a graph is really important. And then we're going to take it to the next level where once you calculate the zeros, you'll be able to sketch the graph using those zeros. Again, that's a little bit longer uh, moving with regards to, uh, I think it's chapter four and chapter five. So how do you find intercepts given an equation? Well, the idea is, is that when you have x-intercepts, what you'll do is uh, plug in y equals zero, try to solve for all values of x. And then when you do the y-intercept, you'll plug in x equals zero 
and find all those values to see what happens. So let's do an example here on the whiteboard to kind of show you what that would be. So with regard to that, let's say, let's stick with our quadratics here. Say like we have x squared minus four. So the first question is y-intercept. So to calculate the y-intercept, what you wanna do is you set x equal to zero, plug that into the equation and solve. So the y-intercepts are usually really uh, quite nice. So you get zero squared minus four. And so the y-intercept is minus four. Not bad. So how do we find, say, the x-intercept? Well, in this case, we set y equal to zero and solve. And when you do that, you get zero equals x squared minus four. Oh, quadratics again, right? Well, we talked about this um, in uh, chapter one. So we'll bring the minus four to the other side and you get x squared equals four. And then you take the square root of both sides, right? But then you have plus or minus. So you would have x equals plus or minus the square root of four. And so that would be plus or minus uh, two. So here you see we have two x-intercepts and one y-intercept. So what does that look like on the graph? And I'm not going to do the whole graph. I just kind of want to show you what the intercepts would look like. So here, the two x-intercepts would be here. That's two, zero. And then over here would be minus two, zero. And then the y-intercept is, is zero minus four. So here's minus four here. And so that would be zero minus four. So this concept again, uh, super important. Uh, we're gonna be coming back to it quite a bit. So I kind of wanted to make sure that uh, you had a quick introduction on it. Uh, we'll spend, like I said, a lot more time calculating intercepts in chapters four and definitely in chapter five. And so uh, the other thing that I just kind of want to um, give you a, a brief introduction on is graphing equations. And I'm just going to show you a linear one. And you'll see that in the homework in this section, I didn't ask you to do any uh, other sketches besides a linear one. So let me show you my strategy with regards to the linear equation. So say like we have the equation y equals uh, 2x plus 5. So the idea, there's the slope, and you could find the intercepts, which is kind of a, a nice way to do it as well. And so, but I, what I actually like to do is um, just make a little table where I'll plug in a value of x and out will come a value of y. So for example, if I plug in a value of x equals zero, I get y equals two times zero plus five. And so that would equal plus five. And what is that? That's the y-intercept, right? Pretty nice. So let's plug in another number. I'm gonna plug in minus one. Uh, you could plug in plus one, but you would see that the numbers are gonna get more positive. And I wanna kind of keep my graph in a, a, a nice here on the whiteboard. So when you plug in one, you get y equals two times, or minus one, excuse me, plus five. And two times minus one is minus two. Minus two plus five is three. So you can see we're not going too high up on the y-axis. Let me just plug in one more number. I'm gonna skip minus two. I'm just gonna plug in minus three. See else what I'm gonna get. So y equals two times minus three plus five, two times minus three is minus six, minus six plus five equals minus one. So what do we do from here? Well, basically what, oh, I can't believe I did that. 
Uh, okay, class, I think I recovered. I had to redo this, uh, but the calculation is recorded. So the next thing I wanted to show you is the graph. There we go. So this would be the x-axis and this would be the y-axis. So let me just put in a, a few things here. Two, three, four on both sides. And you can see here we're going up in the positive direction and then down in the negative direction. So let's plot these points. Well, the first point here is x equals zero, y equals five. One, two, three, four, five. So that would be the first point right up here. Second point is x equals minus one, y equals three, one, two, three, that would be this point right here. And the third point, uh, x equals minus three, y equals minus one, so that would be right here. So you could see that you graph this, and it's supposed to be a nice straight line. Uh, with regards to that, the arrows are put at either end to indicate that this uh, line goes on forever. As x gets really uh, small, you're gonna go y to minus infinity. And as x gets really big, y is gonna go to positive infinity. So what do we have here? Well, here's our y-intercept. We already calculated it, zero, five. So what is our x-intercept? That way we have one of them right here. You can see from the graph, what is that number? So again, the strategy would be uh, the x-intercept is when y equals zero. So you would have zero equals two x plus five. If you bring this five to the other side, you end up with two x equals minus five. Divide each side by two. You would have x equals minus five halves, or in decimal, that would be minus 2.5. And you could see that if I drew this perfectly, that that would be uh, between minus two and minus three, which would be minus 2.5. So uh, we're not going through everything here in uh, uh, section 2.2. So this ends the uh, lecture uh, for this section. And uh, the next week, uh, we're gonna jump into chapter three.